there was set there are six water pots of stone. After the manner of purifying the Jews containing two or three firkins of peace. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. Yes. And he said unto them, Draw out now and bow unto the governor of the feast. Mm -hmm. And they When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. Amen. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Amen. Look at verse 9. We want to talk about water that was made wine. Wine that was made wine. Praise the Lord. Praise God. In the book of John, Deacon Pickett so plainly showed us this morning that John's purpose is to show us, as he says in chapter 20, he's, he's proven that Jesus is the Christ. The Son of God. And through believing, you might have life in his name. John sets forth that, starting at the first chapter, that Jesus is the Son of God. That Jesus is the Christ. Right. He starts out with, and he says that in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then he talks about uh, uh, this uh, verse 14 kind of sums up the entire uh, 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 book of John. Mm -hmm. And he says that the word was made flesh. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we beheld his glory mm -hmm. as of the only begotten of the Father, mm -hmm. full of grace and truth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. And pretty much sums it up that the word that was in the beginning has now been made flesh mm -hmm. came and dwelt among us mm -hmm. and John says we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the father mm -hmm. full of grace mm -hmm. and truth John the Baptist was baptized and they came to him, and he let them know, I am not the Christ. Mm -hmm. But he said, there's one that's coming who is mightier than I am, mm -hmm. whose shoe latching I'm not worthy to stoop down mm -hmm. and loose. And they said, well, if you're not the Christ, the Christ then, who are thou? Mm -hmm. He said, that I baptize with water. That's one that stands among you, whom you know not. Mm -hmm. He let them know, and he was referring to Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. When he saw Jesus come, he said, Behold, the Lamb was taken away, the Lamb of God was taken away, the sins of the world. Amen. Yes. This is John's testimony mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Then, as he's standing with his disciples, again, he looks, see Jesus coming the next day, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Praise God. And then, Simon Peter, Andrew comes and finds him and says, Look, we have found the Messiah, the Christ. That's what John wants us to know, that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Messiah. And Andrew says, which is being interpreted, the Christ. Jesus, praise God, tells us, Peter, thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, yes. which is by interpretation, stone. a stone. Praise God. Jesus is telling Peter that, that your name is going to be Cephas. That's good. Which means stone. Mm -hmm. Who can tell Peter that his name is 
going to mean stone or the life he's going to live and what Jesus is going to do with him in the future. Who could say it except to be God? So yes, your name shall be stone. Peter at that time, right now, Peter, he's just Simon. He's, he, he actually is. And, and you watch his life. He's going to be a coward. Yeah. But Jesus said, no, your name shall be Cephas, which is interpreted a stone. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. We see Jesus is going to change the life of Peter. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. He tells them, follow me. Then you see Philip and Nathaniel. Philip found it and Daniel said, We found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathaniel asked the question. He asked that, Can any, there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Mm -hmm. My question to you today, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Amen. If anybody asks you that question, you tell them, what Philip said, come and see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Jesus sees that Daniel coming. Like Daniel, he says, before uh, he said he, he said he is a Israelite and indeed whom's no guy. Mm -hmm. Jesus knew his character. Mm -hmm. That Daniel, how you know me? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, before Philip called you, I saw you. Mm -hmm. Under the fig tree, I saw you. Let him know I, I knew you before Philip knew you. Who can do that but God? And then Daniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, here it is, that testimony again. Thou art the Son of God. Yes. Thou art the King of Israel. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the Christ. Amen. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things. Than these. Praise the Lord. So chapter 2 starts off and says, and the third day. So there's a link from chapter 1 to chapter 2. Mm -hmm. It starts off, and the third day. Mm -hmm. What's the link? It's the third day. Notice what he just told Nathan. He said, greater things mm -hmm. shall you see than these. And where do we end up? We end up at a marriage in Cana of Galilee. Yes. Right. On the third day. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now this could be the third day after Jesus had, had, had said to Nathaniel that greater things you shall see than these. Or it could be the third day after John had said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. but, but, but whatever it is, remember, when, when we look at Jesus here, we just, don't just look at him as uh, Mary's little baby that was in the manger. Right. And don't just look at him as Joseph's son, the, 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 the carpenter's son. Right. Uh, but, but this is Jesus, as they have declared, this is the Son of God. Yep. This yep. is the Word of God made flesh. Yep. This is the King of Israel. Yep. And, and so when we make this transition from, from the first chapter to, to the second chapter, when we look at what's going on here in Cana of Galilee, we can't look at it lightly. Right. Amen. It said the third day, praise God. I know, I don't know about you, but the third day is significant in the scripture. Praise God. Somebody talked about it this morning that Jesus, when he got up from the grave the third day, he said, all power right. is given unto me in what? Heaven right. and in earth. Right. Amen. 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 Somebody mentioned it earlier that Jesus... He, he, he didn't get his start. He, wasn't, he didn't get his start right there, but he's always been. Mm -hmm. We got to see that as we come here. The third day, who, who do we see? We see the one that has all power. We see the king of Israel. We see the king of the universe. We see the son of God. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here at a marriage in Cana of Galilee. Galilee is a, a little despised place. This place here was 
uh, a place where uh, possibly most Gentiles were, right. uh, uh, where, where where Jews had had had, had mixed. Mixed with marriage in Galilee, but this was a place that was despised and looked down on. But I want you to know the Bible said there was a marriage there and Jesus was there. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. He's in Galilee at this marriage. Mm -hmm. and, 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 the, and the mother of Jesus was there. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear that? The mother of Jesus was there. Uh, uh, make sure you tell your Catholic friends, get it right. Uh, not the mother of God, the mother of Jesus. Yes. What's that? Yes. We'll talk about that. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Right. I, that, I, I pray that that's what goes on in all marriages. Mm -hmm. I, I pray that Jesus is at that marriage. Right. Amen. Amen. We, got, uh, we invite everybody uh, to our marriages. But I think it's really important that Jesus be invited to the marriage. Yeah. America, marriage is ordained by God. Oh, yeah. You can only have holy matrimony yeah. with holy people yeah, yeah. on the basis of a holy God, yeah. on his holy truth yeah. between a man and a woman. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So Jesus was at this way. He was at the wedding with his disciples. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I've seen people that claim to have Jesus at their wedding, but uh, uh, I don't think Jesus is in it, some of these engagements. Mm -hmm. uh, better yet, he, he ain't showing up at the marriage, at the wedding. He ain't in the marriage. Right. Uh, and definitely ain't at some of these receptions. <laughs> How these folk come in and get married and holy matrimony again. Uh, they don't know who they're getting drunk in the name of, but it ain't in the name of God. But, 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 but in the marriage, Jesus, Jesus needs to be in the marriage. Amen. We get in the marriage and it's all about us. And what you ain't did for me and what have you done for me lately? And you used to do this and you used to do that. And, and, and just, just ignoring the vows that we have given. Vows don't mean anything once we get married. Sounds good in the beginning. Sit up before the preacher, got tears in our eyes, and we crying. Oh, I do all this and I do all this for you. And yes, for better or worse, richer or poor, sickness and in health, till death do us part. Yeah. Now soon the money gets strange. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Jesus needs to be in our marriages. We need to honor God. Be content. Stop blaming each other for why you ain't happy. Stop blaming each other for why you ain't got what you supposed to have in life. I thought you said you knew a sovereign God. If he's sovereign, he's in control. He's in control of your life. He can bring you comfort. Even if our spouse ain't doing what they should do. Amen. He can give us an inner peace. Despite what the other parties are doing. Yeah. Mighty funny, we forgive everybody in America. And we have a hard time with the one we live with. Amen. 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 Jesus ain't in the engagement, he ain't at the wedding, he ain't at the reception. And I want you to know son, you sure didn't invite him to the divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus was calling his disciples to the marriage, and when they wanted wine. The mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. The mother of Jesus realized that was a, a, a problem. Look where she turned when that was a problem. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Don't we know where to go when there's a problem? Yeah. That was an issue there. The, the wine was there. And yeah. The Bible lets us know that wine makes the heart merry. I'm not going to get into uh, all of the stuff about the fermentation of wine and stuff like that. No, this ain't a ticket to get drunk. But I want you to know that the Bible talks about how wine makes the heart merry. But if you notice, the wine is also in the Old Testament when this part talks about restoration and how God would, 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 would bring his people to restoration and the land would be filled with oil and fat and wine. And it talks about that, that, that joy that he would give us, amen, and that he would restore to us. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. 
Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm, this, 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 look at the focus here. Yes, there's a marriage there, but it doesn't mention, it doesn't mention the groom. It doesn't mention the bride. Mm -hmm. But notice what it does mention. It mentions that Jesus and his disciples were there. Mm -hmm. The focus is not on can we get drunk or not. Yeah. Can we drink wine or not? The focus is on, remember, what John wants us to know, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. The focus is on, Nathaniel, greater things shall you see than these. And it records Jesus being in a place that is almost insignificant to people. Yeah. He's had a marriage there. And they ran out of wine and married went to the one that can do something about it. That's right. right. Praise God. Amen. And she came to Jesus and said unto him, they have no wine. That was important. They had a marriage. They had a marriage feast at their festivals and things like that to have the wine. But notice what Jesus says unto her. Woman, what have I to do with thee? My house. It's not yet come. Is Jesus being disrespectful? He said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. Now, if I say that to my wife, I get in trouble. If I say that to my mother, I get in trouble. But Jesus is not being disrespectful here. This is the same term that Jesus uses when he's on the cross. Right. Yeah. And he lets her know. He says, Woman, behold, thy son. John, behold, thy mother. This is not disrespectful. But what he's saying is, there is a transition here, there is a separation here. Let's look at the separation. Jesus' mother has raised him. From the time he was a baby, she, she, she birthed him. Right. She incubated him. But notice, it, it, it said when, when they wanted wine at the marriage, it said she came to Jesus. She didn't go to nobody else. She went to Jesus. Right. It's something that Mary knew about Jesus that she would go to him and say they have no wine. That was something Mary understood about Jesus. Right. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. <laughs> Look at here. Jesus says, Woman. He didn't say, Mother. He said, What have I to do with thee? All these years. Look at verse 5. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, what? Do it. What? Now this woman, this woman who has been telling Jesus all his life what to do. Now she turns and she gives the greatest admonishment any mother can give any child. Any mother can give anybody. Any witness can give anybody. Whatever he say, do it. Yeah. That's the best thing that you can tell anybody. Now, she's been telling Jesus what to do, but now Jesus says to her, woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. She says, listen, whatever he say do, do it. Why? Because John, just as John recognized, she knows who he is. John said in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is the Creator. Amen. Amen. And just as Mary, Mary, yes, yes, she incubated Jesus. She birthed Jesus so he could give her the new birth. Amen. All right. That's right. All right. Yes, she, she carried him until the time came. But I want you to know the time came that Jesus, praise God, will give her the new birth. Yeah. 
And here it is, Jesus, they, when, when, he was, when he was 12 years old, they lost him at the feast. And when they found him, here's, a, here, here, here's already a preview that Jesus was separating unto his father. Said, must not, it's not that I must be what? My, my, my father's business. And guess what? Mary understands that when she comes to Jesus, and Jesus said, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour has not yet come. What was she recognizing? That it's Jesus. He's about his father's business now. Yeah. And she submits, whereas she used to tell him, now he's telling her, whatever he Say, do it. Yeah. So Jesus said to her, woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour has not yet come. I want you to know this son. He tells his, he tells his mother, he tells his woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet. But in John the 17th chapter, the first verse, he says, Father, my hour is come. He tells his mother, my hour is not yet. He tells his father, my hour has come. What is this hour referring to? It's referring to his crucifixion. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, John wants us to know, just as John the Baptist declared, behold, the Lamb of God was taking away the sins of the world. <coughs> That's lamb, that lamb would be led to that hour to where he will be crucified, and what will happen? He'll take away the sins of the world. Amen. So yes, Mary, she incubated the, the God man. Right. He was born Jesus as the angel told him, for he shall do what? Save his people from their sins. Yes. Can Jesus call her a woman? Yes, he can. Why? Because she birthed the creator. And you remember when God made Adam and then he put Adam to sleep and he took him from his side and what did he make? From his side that he made woman. He can call her woman because he is the creator. So who do we have here in King of Galilee? We have the Creator. Mm -hmm. right. Mary goes to the Creator mm -hmm. and says, hey, they have no wine. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, woman, what have I to do with thee? Now my hour has not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, whatever he say unto you, do it. Let me tell you about our Creator. Mary submitted to our Creator's word when the angel came and told her about the Holy Spirit overshadowing her. That yep. shall be within her, shall be uh, the oh, Son of the Highest. But Mary came to this conclusion and she said, Let it be according to that word. Mm -hmm. Ain't that good news? Yeah. Here it is we have a mother, a man that. Is telling them to whatever he say, do it. Mothers, fathers, witnesses, that's the best thing we can tell our children. The best thing we can tell the world is whatever Jesus said, do it. Right. Amen. Amen. We can tell them graduate. We can tell them stay in school. We can tell them get a job. But let me tell you, you got to tell them what Jesus said. Right. Yeah. Not only tell them what Jesus said, but you do what Jesus said yourself. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Mary was one and she was obedient to Jesus. So not only did she tell them whatever he said, do it, she did whatever he said. That's the same thing for us. We want to tell people do stuff. But let me ask you a question. How are we doing it? We must be doing it first. Right. And if we're going to tell others right. to do it. Amen. And that was set that was set there are six water pots of stone mm -hmm. after the manner of purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins of peas. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now and bear it to the governor of the feast. And they bear it. Mm -hmm. 
that were set there six water pots of stone, not five. Five is the number of grace, not seven. Seven is the number of completion, but there were six with the number of man. Mm -hmm. There were six water pots of stone. Yep. But why were these water pots of stone there? This is the manner of purifying of the Jews, and they held many gallons of water. These were for the purifying. In other words, this is where they would wash their dirty hands, and they would wash their old muddy and dirty feet from walking in these roads, and they would use these for purifying. And here it is, they, these old vessels, as Deacon Pickett talked about this morning, these vessels was used for the purifying of the Jews, and held, uh, and they held many gallons uh, of water. However, these were empty pots. These, these, these empty pots, they represented, praise God, the old Jewish religion. This represented their old way of going about considering themselves to be righteous. Mm -hmm. But without Jesus and Jesus' word and the spirit of God, they're empty. Any religion that has not Jesus is an empty religion. Right, right, you see right. here, praise God, that Jesus mm -hmm. said unto them, fill the water pots yes. with water. Oh, yeah. And did they obey what the Creator said do? Yeah. Yeah. Creator said in the beginning, let there be light. And what happened? There was light. Yeah. We see here, amen, that Deacon Pickett talked this morning that Jesus Christ is the light, the light of every man that cometh into the world. Here it is, the same one that spoke light into existence, the same one that is that light, John said, I'm not that light. He's that light. That light, praise God. Now he has come to this wedding, uh, this marriage in Cana of Galilee. The same one that spoke the light into existence, praise God. Here it is. When he says to do something, as Mary said, his creation obeys. Amen. God has made us new creatures in him. And praise God, one sign that you are a born again believer is that you are obedient to his word. Amen. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. And what did they do? They filled them up to the brim. See, water is not their issue. Water is not what they need. But Jesus told them, fill the water pots with water. Yeah. Praise God. But here, the water, we understand in the scriptures, the water is the water of the word. Right. And he yeah. said, fill them up and fill them up to the brim. Mm -hmm. you fill them up to the brim. You fill something up to the brim, you can't add nothing to it. Right. Amen. Right. And Jesus wanted you to know is that when he said fill it up with water to the brim, that what he does, he don't need no assistance. Right. What he does, he does it to the fullest. Right. Yeah. When he saves, he saves to the utmost. Yeah. When he fills, when it's, when it's full, it's the language of John. John said that Moses, the law came by Moses, but, Jesus, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Yeah. And we saw him, amen, and said the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Right. Amen. And we, we, we saw him as the begotten of, of the only begotten of the Father, what? Full of grace and truth. Amen. What Jesus does, he does it to the fullest. Right. Amen. He tells me, I come that you might have life and that what? You might have it more abundantly. Yeah. I, I write unto you that your joy might be what? Full. He told him, fill it up yeah. to the brim. And he said unto them, draw out now and bear it unto the governor of the feast. Mm -hmm. And they obeyed and they, they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine. Now, notice here, praise God, he told them, fill it with water. Mm -hmm. And they obeyed. And they took the water to the governor. Mm -hmm. And when they got the water to the governor, the governor, amen, had tasted it and it had been made wine. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of foolish for them to be out of wine, but Jesus said, fill the water pots with water. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. But Jesus, they need wine. That's kind of foolish to take some, some water out of these pots, mm -hmm. out of these old clay pots, and, and, and take it. That's kind of foolish when they need wine. Uh -huh. But notice what happened when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine. wine. And yeah. knew not whence it was. But thank God for the servants. We got any servants of God in here today? Thank God for the servants. The servants which drew the wild yeah. knew. Yeah. Amen. We know who the power is. Right. We know who the power is of. Yeah. We know where the power comes from. Right. Yeah. Amen. We're just earthen vessels. Yeah. Right. Amen. But the, we, the, the power is not of us. Yeah. But it's of the one, praise God. We yeah. have a treasure in these old earthen vessels. Yeah. Yeah. That the power may be of yeah. God right. and not of us. Yeah. And we just earthen vessels that God has chosen to use. Right. Right. And we're to take the gospel of the word, praise right. God. Yeah. We're to take this gospel and we're to and, 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 and present it to men, boys, and girls all around the world. Right. But somebody that don't believe it would say that's foolish. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that believe not. But to us that believe, it is the power of God. Yeah. Take the gospel, praise God. Yeah. Don't mix it with anything else. It's the grace of God. Yeah. It's the power of God yeah. unto salvation. Yeah. Stop trying to add to it. Stop trying to take away from it. Depend on it. Yeah. Support the gospel. Yeah. Rely on the gospel. Yeah. It's God's word. Yeah. It's coming from the creator. And if he says, take my word and it won't return it to me void. Right. If you take it, they reject it. It's all part of the plan. If right. you take it and they receive it, it's all part of the plan. All right. Amen. That's all right. That's right. That's right. Amen. But the servants which drew the water knew yeah. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, <laughs> but thou hast kept the good wine until now. <laughs> Praise God. I want you to know only Jesus can give the good wine. Yeah. Hey Amen. The scripture tells us, oh, taste and see what? That the Lord is good. I want you to know they filled it up with water. When they buried it out, when it got to the governor's heart, I want you to know he said it's the best wine. Listen, what Jesus gives, he gives the best, praise God. I want you to know what did he bring to the marriage in Cana of Galilee? What did he bring in that old despised place at the little party's wedding? I want you to know he brought the best. Wine. What did he bring? Yes. He brings that which satisfies. Yeah. He said, I come to give you life and come to give it more abundantly. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. praise God. He is our satisfaction. Yeah. Jesus, praise God. He's all we need. His grace is sufficient. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Said, Amen. Thou hast kept yes. the good wine until now. Yes. What do we see happening here? We see this transition from the old covenant. John is showing how Jesus comes to replace and to fulfill those things that used to be. Yes. The law, the prophets, all of these things were a shadow of things to come. Right. John identified it, praise God. Mm -hmm. Those shadows that you saw, mm -hmm. Jesus said, I come not to destroy the law nor the prophets. Yeah. But to fulfill, praise God. Yeah. Mother Pinky talked about that lamb that they used to take. That lamb couldn't have any blemishes. The eyes and the, and the hand and the feet and everything had to be in good shape, praise God. But she talked about, but this lamb here, even though they brought a pretty good looking lamb back then, that lamb died. And all it did was wash their sins away for a year. Yeah. But thanks be to God. John the Baptist, praise God, who was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. And one day when he saw Jesus coming, he said, Behold! He didn't say, Look, here comes another lamb for the Day of Atonement. But he said, Behold! The Lamb of God yes, will take away the sins of the world, not for a year, but forever. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Jesus 
comes, praise God, to replace those things that were just pictures of him. And when we read the scripture, amen, you got to understand, understand that Jesus was the son of God even when he was in Mary, praise God. He didn't, amen. He didn't start getting some accolades and, and, and getting some credentials and, and deity. Praise God. When he, when, when he was born a baby and when he became 12. No, listen. John said, in the beginning was the Word. Yeah. Yeah. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Listen, if it's in the beginning, ain't nobody but one person in the beginning. Wasn't nobody before God but God. And if the Word, praise God, was in the beginning yeah. with God, Then John tells you that all things were made by him. And there was not anything made that was not made by him. Jesus is the creator. Yes. Amen, brother. Amen. So when he comes into the kingdom of Galilee, what is it for them to be? How of wine? Look what Jesus did. He told them, go get water. Well, Jesus, why would you tell me go get water? They need wine because I'm the creator. And I can make whatever. Wait a minute. He made water wine. They took and it was water. But by the time they got to the governor, he tasted it and said, boy, you're going to save the good wine until last. But well, wait a minute. I don't remember them putting no additives in it. Yeah. Right. I don't remember them going and sneaking away and saying, give me one of them little Kool-Aid packets real quick and trying to make it wine. I didn't hear them say, hey, we got to get some fermentation in here. We got to let it sit aside. I didn't hear them say, hey, we got to go buy the wine press. But let me tell you something. How was the water made wine? i tell you how it was made wine. Jesus said, take it. Bear it to the governor. Wait a minute. By the time it left their hand and got to the heart and got to the, got to the, uh, to the governor, it was good wine. I'll tell you how it happened. God willed it. Amen. Your salvation. Is it good? You right, don't right. get saved by no obstacle course. That's right. That's right. Oh, no. You don't go labor. You don't go sweat. If you save today, you're saved by the power of God. Right. Right. Salvation right. is of the Lord. Yes, sir. Yeah. If you saved, it wasn't because of your will. Yeah. That water became wine because God, Jesus, willed it. Right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Right. The Bible tells us if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are what? Passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Yes. He made water wine. He made water something that it never was before. That's, that's How did he do bro. that? He did that through winning it through his word. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. But notice his servants were obedient to his word. Mm -hmm. And by his servants, listen, servants, mm -hmm. being obedient to his word yes. and just taking it. I know it sounds foolish, but it sounds foolish to them that don't believe. Yeah. Yeah. When the governor tasted the wine, mm -hmm. he tasted the water that was made wine. He said, it's the best. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. We have got to be obedient to his word. Yeah. Yes. We have to take it. Yeah. Just take it like it is. Right. And deliver it. That's right. Amen. God does the willing. Right. That's right. It's not to him that run it. Amen. That's right. Not to him that but but it's to that willeth, but God who what? Show mercy. mercy. Yeah. God does the work. Yeah. He just take it. I know we want everybody to be saved right away, but that's just not in God's plan. Right. Be obedient to his word. Mm -hmm. uh, brother, you can come so we can do our communion. But let me say this to you. Yeah, amen. That was a wedding at Cana of Galilee. Mm -hmm. and that was a wedding feast mm -hmm. at Cana of Galilee. And I want you to know, praise God, it said that Jesus and his disciples mm -hmm. were there. Amen. And that's still going to be a great wedding. That's going to be a great wedding. And guess who's going to be at that wedding? Jesus and his disciples. Amen. He's going to invite us come to the feast that's been prepared for us. Praise God. Amen. The wedding feast 
of a lamb. Yes, sir. Oh, listen. I want you to know it said that yeah. the governor, the governor of the uh, of the wedding, praise God, did not know that the governor of the universe had made water wine. Yeah. Right. But the governor said, you say the good wine until now. But listen, he said he took it to the bridegroom. Listen, guess what? The bridegroom was there himself. Jesus Christ, the church, is his bride. And we're going to meet the bridegroom one day in the air. What a wedding, praise God. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. What a wedding. Praise the Lord. We ought to give him glory. Yeah. We ought to give him glory. Yeah. We were nothing. And he has taken nothing. Yeah. And he's made something out of nothing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Only he can do that. And we give him all the glory. God bless you. Amen. Praise God.